Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So today's video, Erin is on her way out of town. She is doing a girl's trip. So while we wave goodbye to her, we went and picked up a toy. So let's have some fun today. So don't want to talk too long. I want to try and see how much dirt we can finally move. The huge dirt pile behind the house over here. And then there's another one on the side of the house. So went ahead and rented a machine to get all of this moved. I'm going to try and spread it out back here. Probably build up the shooting berm a little bit. And then there's some low spots back there where hopefully we can put a lot of it. But I ended up picking up, I want to say like a 12,000 pound machine. I got to look it up or post it right here. It's a uh, Taiachi TL-10 V2. Uh, again, I think it's a 10 or 12,000 pound machine, very big. I think it's, it's bigger than ever one that I've rented before. But we had to go and pick it up ourselves, the local place that we usually go to. The prices are just ridiculous nowadays. Um, they went from a machine like that or even smaller to being like 250 a day to 600 a day. And if you wanted it delivered, uh, it went from like 75 to like $150. So way too expensive. And this place was about 30 minutes away. I was actually working last night and it was on my way home. So I just went ahead and picked it up, but it is only 275 a day. And unfortunately I did have to use their trailer because mine can only hold about 5,000 pounds. I think this thing's actually only a 14K trailer, which means I'm overweight probably by about 2,000 pounds because I bet that trailer probably weighs three or 4,000 pounds. And then when you're on top of a 12,000 pound machine, we're probably way overweight, but that's what they gave me. But their trailer was $60 a day. So again, I want to try and get as much dirt as I can move today without uh, going over a two day time frame. However, they only give me eight hours on the machine, so it does put you into a second day if you go over on eight hours. But what I love about this place is not only are their machine rentals still really, really cheap, like almost three times cheaper than the other place, but if you rent it on a Friday afternoon or Friday night, they do not charge you for Friday. They only charge you for Saturday. Sunday is basically free because they're not open and you can return it Monday morning. So if you pick it up at like Friday night, you can technically return it Monday afternoon or Monday night and it still only counts counts as a one day rental, but you can actually be in the machine four days total. So that is a hell of a deal. Now, of course, the Ram handled it no problem. As if you guys have seen some of the past videos, we went ahead and picked up recently a 2022 Ram 3500 high output turbo diesel dually. So not only does it have like a 5,300 pound payload, but it's got over a 32,000 pound towing capacity. So this like 15, 16,000 pounds was nothing for this thing to tow. It did a wonderful job and you barely even knew it was back there. Except for the fact that the tires are bald. They are the original tires and they've got 60,000 miles on it. Uh, in this rain, I almost went through a stop sign and then I was just sitting there basically peeling out and losing traction. So we have got to get our new tires installed here soon, but I'm going to get changed. I'm going to fire this thing up and we're going to do some property damage today.
Good morning, everybody. So we only got about six hours of work done yesterday, and uh, I did not mean to say we were going to destroy the property, that we were actually going to destroy the property. I meant like we're going to like tear it up, like we're going to get rid of this dirt mound. Well, after about six hours of work and uh, the machine almost ran out of gas, the rain just kept on coming. I feel like we got like nothing done, even though this dirt pile was like pretty much all the way up to this tree over here and kind of like that tree right there. But we literally, we did destroy the property. There is so much just nasty mud that we've created just through this one path that uh, I've got my buddy Rob coming over tomorrow on Sunday. Uh, his little uh, Kubota, I think his is a subcompact, so it's lightweight, nimble, but he's got a box blade on it that hopefully we'll be able to take some of these like huge tire tracks in here with his box blade and like scrape it back down into the holes to like get rid of the ruts. But I don't think we're gonna be able to fix anything until probably next summer uh, and have the box blade back out here when this stuff actually turns back into like a real hard or like almost like a powder. And then we can actually like scrape it instead of uh, having this really super soft mud. But there is still a absolute ton more to go. It's not gonna rain today or tomorrow, so I may get back on the machine today but just everywhere that we went, it is just all torn up. Not to mention some spots I went a little bit uh, too deep. So I don't know if it shows up on camera, but we started digging away at this pile in here, but we've kind of made it like a little dip down in there. So this is all gonna have to be like box bladed and like flattened back out. So uh, obviously it still tapers away from the house, but we've made basically like a little swimming pool right in there where it's all gotta be flattened out still. But just every time you turn on the machine, it digs in and like counter steers like on the tracks and makes these huge like ruts and piles and stuff. But there's just a huge pile left here to go. No clue where I'm gonna put it, except just keep packing it on itself. The other problem is obviously you need to return a machine uh, pretty much the same way that you got it. So I spent probably two hours trying to clean this thing yesterday. And I feel like I didn't even make a dent all this mud pile that you see like in here and in here all came out from the tracks. And personally, I think they look, you know, relatively clean, but we're basically just gonna cake more mud in there and make it even worse tomorrow or today if I get back on it, because the same thing's gonna happen unless we can get down to like a harder pay dirt. But we'll see what uh, Rob's machine kind of does tomorrow when he comes over. A little disappointing, but I feel a little bit better that we're starting to get rid of it, but oh my God, what a mess. So I'll be back later today. I'll be back tomorrow when the sun comes up, maybe dries it out a little bit and it gets a little warmer and then we'll tackle it again. All right, everybody, last day here. Got my buddy coming over. We're gonna try and get as much done as we can. Last night I did spend about two hours on the machine, which I think I'm at eight hours total right now. So I've got a full eight hours today and a full tank of gas that I went and got that uh, we're almost done. But I did have to rip a tree out yesterday, although technically I didn't have to have to, but when uh, up on the porch, that tree was right next to this big guy right here. And unfortunately where it was, like somewhere, like right about there, from the deck, the tree's too young and it was basically blocking like the view. So now when you're up here, you can kind of see the entire backyard and it just looks a lot better. So it sucks, but it's not the greatest tree in the world. I don't know what species it is, but it's not one of the good ones. But I got a heck of a lot more done. This pile is almost uh, completely gone. We just need to keep moving it. I'm running out of space in the back though, so I'm a little worried how bad it's gonna look back there, especially where we're putting the dirt that turns into a swamp in the spring. Well, with so much dirt piled up back there, we're gonna make a swamp now probably in a new spot because where else is the water gonna go? If that's a high spot now, it's gonna push the water like to the left or to the right uh, to where the shooting mound is back there. So something we'll have to deal with in the future. But hopefully his tractor will work. Hopefully his uh, box blade will be able to smooth all this out when we're done because it looks so bad. But as far as I can tell, we've got a good slope away from the house. So any rainwater, et cetera, that goes on the deck will just flow out here into the backyard and should just be taken all the way to the back there. So it is what it is. But I'm gonna fire this thing up, get it warmed up, and uh, hopefully by the end of today, we will be done.
Hey everybody, so it's been several days later. This is like the most boring freaking video ever, but we were able to get it done. Uh, unfortunately, I broke my freaking wellhead top, so they're coming over to get me a new cap. I did not break the actual uh, well pipe. I just cracked the lid and moved it a little bit. So thankfully no major damage was done, but holy crap, does it look so much better back here now. That pile up there is actually just a bunch of wood Rob left his tractor here, so I am going to uh, remove some of that wood, bring it over to the fire pit, and just burn it and get rid of it. But we are relatively smooth down through here. Winter's probably going to bring some of these mounds down a little bit lower as they continue to like get hit with like rain and stuff and kind of like self-smooth out. But we do have several low spots to hopefully I have uh, some dirt left over or I can use some of the shooting mound dirt to like kind of scrape off and fill some of these low spots in. But holy crap, this shooting berm is so big now. Not only is it like 10 feet longer, but it's almost ridiculously uh, pointless to be so thick. If you can actually see how wide this thing is now. Not to mention there's just so many crazy spots now to where it's built up. Uh, that's like three foot high now back there where it kind of like ramps up and then it drops off to the other side but I really had no other point to put it and I made it way too high back in through here so we're like that big tree is that's like a low spot so that's gonna hold water this is holding water it's probably gonna push all the water like over in here like I said it's gonna make like a new kind of swamp area in that spot but it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. It's far enough away from the house that we really don't see anything. So I really don't care that much. But again, it does look good. At least more up here towards the front of the house or the back of the house. Again, accomplish what we needed to do. But let me take you inside real quick. Let me show you what I got going on in there to give you guys a little bit of an update. And then we'll be back a little bit later when uh, we get started on, I guess, the next project, whatever that's going to be. All right, so first update, if you guys don't know, this is Salsa. We kind of adopted her. She made our way onto the property one day. Erin being the uh, crazy cat lady that she is, <laughs> adopted another cat. Uh, she has permanently become ours. Erin brings her into the house every single night. And that brings up an important topic that when we go downstairs, uh, we need to get something done for her. We have now completed or got all of the lumber that we needed so we can complete that bedroom downstairs in the basement. Uh, I am sad to say Erin and I actually did find another stray cat a few days ago and it was the sweetest boy, deathly ill, smelled so bad, skin missing, skin and bones. We, fin we spent a few days keeping it here in the bedroom where it's actually kind of warm. Uh, it made messes all over the floor. I don't know if you can tell, like on these little spots here, we had a litter box. We had a warm heater for it that it could lay on, like a heating blanket. We made a little tent for it. We tried several days to keep it alive and uh, it actually was doing well. It would walk and jump up here very normally. But Aaron finally took it to the vet and uh, the vet was like, nah, it's like full of cancer. Um, it's probably in the best interest to put it down. And uh, unfortunately we ended up losing him, but it's been several days. The house stinks really bad. So not only was it just located in this bedroom, but I think because of the HRV, it was blowing in fresh air through this vent. It was sucking it out through the vent in the uh, half bath or the master bath over there and sucking it back out. And it just absolutely blew it all through this house. And even several, several days later, you can still kind of smell it. It just like the smell of death. But I guess that was a sacrifice we were trying to make to kind of give it its last few days to uh, let it be safe, let it get food until unfortunately we had to put it down. But as for getting the lumber and everything and getting it down here in this bedroom, because Salsa is our cat now, Aaron brings her in every single night. They chill down here in the basement on the couch. Aaron sometimes falls asleep down here with her. So we're really trying to get this bedroom in here actually finished. You guys have already seen me do this wall over here, but we have got the back wall done. We are started up onto the ceiling. So this entire bedroom here is gonna be an absolute crazy dark like little cave that hopefully we can set our uh, bed in here. And I don't know if that bed will actually stay in here and live in here forever. 
but we're gonna set up our uh, end tables, we're gonna put our dresser in here, TV, etc. And it's real important because this winter may get crazy, crazy cold and the RV just sucks so bad. We may actually find ourselves actually living in our house very soon because we've got carpet already picked out. We just need to finish this wall, finish staining, and I can get all of the wood knocked out get the uh, frame box out to where we're actually putting the lumber instead of just regular drywall transition over here to the window. Again, like I said, carpet, we just need a uh, closet door, we need a uh, bedroom door. And then again, it's gonna be very awesome and very cool that we'll be able to actually uh, spend a night down in here in our actual normal bed instead of having to freeze in the RV basically. Not a permanent thing, but just something that cool that we can finally knock out and that we can actually do. But yeah, I can't wait. It is so cozy down in the basement. It's still kind of cozy up here. And then one more thing I did want to mention, you guys were correct. When you're actually walking on the floor, it sounds kind of like hollow in here. And it was kind of sounding hollow in the bedroom or you could almost feel that the floor has a little bit of a rippling effect. But once I put on that ceiling drywall down in the basement and now we actually kind of have like a box in here where you've got the subfloor up here, then your eye joists, then your actual uh, 5 8 drywall down on the basement ceiling. It's crazy how much more stiffer this floor has become once you box that in. And you guys were right when you said that that was gonna happen. So I can't wait to do the entire house and get all of the basement ceiling done. It's gonna feel so much more quieter and more firm and not so cheaply uh, as the feeling like you're kind of getting like right now. But that's all I got for you guys. A little bit of an update. Several days of work that we were able to get done. And again, it is looking so much better out here now. Again, even with that tree removed, you can just kind of see everything, kind of the lay of the land. And I just absolutely love it. And then even in the future, when we go hunting, we don't actually have to technically go hunting. We can just actually stay here out on the porch and sit in the chair and just wait for them to come to the feeders or behind the shooting mounds where they come. And I can just get my deer uh, very quickly and easily. But we'll be back here in the future with some more videos for you guys. And uh, until then, like always, take care and we'll see you later.